this video we're going to look at the mean and variance of a discrete random variable and how to work that out. There's some formulas on your formula sheet for this, but let's work out how to do it. Let's take the first example that we looked at where we were rolling a die. We would have said the mean is that, using that formula there, the sum of the xf over the sum of the frequencies. So we would have gone 1 times 12 plus 2 times 9 plus 3 times 11, etc., divided by the sum of the frequency column back in the representation of data unit. Okay, so we could replace each of these, the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies, by probabilities. Okay, so the probability based on this data that we get a 1 is 12 out of 60. So that's the probability. Okay, so the mean therefore just becomes the number times the probability. Simple the sum of the x's times the probability. And that's the formula for the mean of a random variable. So the letter that we use is mu, the Greek letter mu. And so we say the mean is the sum of the xp. So the x value times by the probability and we add them all up. Very simple formula. You'll see that we use, instead of mu, we often use e of x, meaning the expected value of the random variables. If we look at this example, we've got a discrete random variable that can have the values 1, 5, or 10. We don't know the probability for 10, but we can quickly work that out. Uh, if we've got a quarter and a half, the probabilities must add to 1, so P is, must be a quarter. For the mean, we just work out the sum of the X values times the probabilities. And I encourage you to write this step out. So 1 times a quarter plus 5 times a half plus 10 times a quarter which is 21 over 4, or if you like, that could be 5 and a quarter or 5.25. That is the average, the theoretical average of this random variable. Let's look at the formula for the variance now. So finding the variance from this probability distribution, we go find the mean first. 1 times 1 tenth, 2 times 2 tenths, 3 times 3 tenths, 4 times 4 tenths, add them all up and we get 3, spot on. So the mean is 3. Okay, so for the variance, 1 squared times 1 tenth, 2 squared times 2 tenths, 3 squared times 3 tenths, 4 squared times 4 tenths, minus the mean squared. Get your calculator out. I know it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a mission to write it all out, but get your calculator out and you'll find that the variance here is 1. That's a very simple thing that you have to know how to do. Finding the mean, finding the variance of a random variable, discrete random variable that you're given. This is what the formulas look like on your formula sheet, exactly like this. So you see the variance formula, the sum of the x squared p, that stands for probability, minus e of x squared, so that's the mean squared. If you're ever asked to find the standard deviation, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So going through this example, for this random variable, mean and the variance. The mean is 0.3, the variance is 3.61, the standard deviation 1.9. It's just simply putting the numbers into that formula. It also asks us to write down the probability distribution of x squared. That's a different random variable. The random variable x squared. So in this case, we take our x values and square them. So we'd have two, minus 2 squared, which is 4, 1 squared, which is 1, and 2 squared, which is 4. So we've got two outcomes the same, which we could combine. So the probability of getting 1 is still, or x squared, 1 squared is still 0.1, but the probability of getting 4 for this random variable is now 0.5 plus 0.4, which is 0.9. So there's the probability distribution of the random variable x squared. Let's look at some applications now of random variables. In this example, we've got three balls with the number one, two, and three written on them. Placed in a bag, two are drawn at random without replacement. We want to know the probability the sum of the numbers on the ball is five. So this first question is just probability. The second question now gets into random variables where we have to come up with the probability distribution based on this situation. This is a very common kind of question. So the first question, uh, the chance that we get a sum of five, well, we can get the two, then the three, or the three, then the two. 
remembering we're drawing these balls without replacement. So there's a chance of one third will get the two on the first draw. There's now two balls left. One of them is the three. So there's a half chance of getting the three on the second draw. We could also reverse it, getting the three first, then the two. So that leads us to the probability of a sum of five is one third. There's actually only three possible sums and each sum is equally likely. So the random variable for the total that we get is pretty simple. You could work out the, uh, this, these probabilities also just by doing what I did up here in the start of part A, thinking, well, how could I get a sum of three, for example? Well, there's only, there's only one way of doing that, uh, is using one and two. So getting the, the, the ball numbered one first, then the ball number two, or getting the ball number two, then the ball number one. Okay? So here's the, uh, the probability distribution for this particular situation. The expected value, three times a third, four times a third, five times a third, add them up. The expected value is four. Uh, remember, this, this is not necessarily a nice number. Uh, because this is so symmetrical, this distribution, it makes sense that four is the average, but you could get a value like 4.2, 4.5. It doesn't have to be one of these values. And the variance, 3 squared times a third, 4 squared times a third, 5 squared times a third, minus the mean squared. Don't forget the minus the mean squared bit here. People sometimes forget that. So the variance here is 2 thirds. The last question asks us to find the probability distribution of L, which is the largest of the two balls drawn, and the mean of this random variable. If we look back at our possible selections, then if these are the two balls that we get, and there's a third chance this will happen, then L, the value of the largest ball we draw, is 2, and there's a third chance of that happening. If this is our selection, then the value of L is 3, and there's a third probability of getting this selection. And if we get this selection, the 2 and the 3, then the value we were, would record for L would be 3 also, with the probability of a third. So there's only two possible values for the largest number that we draw, either 2 or 3. There's a third chance that it'll be 2, and there's a two-thirds chance that it'll be 3. Hence this table here. And hence the expected value. 2 times a third plus 3 times 2 thirds, which is 2 and 2 thirds. The expected value of L, the random variable, which represents the largest ball that we get. In this example, we've got a box with three black balls, two white balls, and we're drawing three balls out without replacement. W is the random variable that represents the number of white balls drawn. Okay. Now, we could do this question using combinations and permutations which we could get the same exact same answers as I've done using the tree diagram. So we're going to work out the probability distribution for W and then work out the mean and this last one here the probability that our random variable is less than the mean. Very typical kind of question. So the first thing I'm thinking here is well what are the possible values for W? The number of white balls drawn. Notice we've only got two white balls in the, the box, so after we've drawn three balls out, we could have no white balls, we could have one, or we could have two. So there's only three choices here. So let's look at our tree diagram. I've drawn it all out. You can see if we get two white balls on the first two drawers, we're definitely going to get a black one for the third one because there's only two white balls. I've drawn all the uh, probabilities out here. So the probability of getting no white balls is this branch down here, three-fifths times a half times one-third, which is one-tenth, as we, were, we had to show. So this would be sufficient here. For part B, working out the probability distribution, we just need to look through. What's the probability of getting one white ball? Well, it's that times that times that, plus three-fifths times a half, times two-thirds plus three-fifths times a half times two-thirds. That's the probability of getting one white. Do all those calculations and we get three-fifths. Once we've got those two, it's really easy to get the probability of getting two white balls. 
just one minus the two probabilities we already have, which is three tenths. So here's our probability distribution for the number of white balls. As I said, you could work out the probability of working out of getting one white ball by saying 2C1 out of the two white balls, choose one of them, times 3C2. From the three other balls, we want to choose another two out and divide that by the total number of ways you can do this, which is 5C3. If you do that on your calcula that calculation, you'll also get 3 fifths. So you may want to try these other two also using combinations. The expected value is easy. This times this, this times this, this times this. Add them up. 1.2. Notice it's not one of the possible outcomes, but that's fine. The theoretical average here is 1.2. This last question. What's the probability that W is less than the mean? Well, the probability W is less than 1.2 is the probability W is 0 or 1. What's the chance that W could be 0 or 1? Well, it's just 1 tenth plus 3 fifths. So that's 7 tenths. There's a 7 tenths or 0.7 chance that you're going to be less than 1.2.